Day here in Esther, if you're with us in person, and also all those online. Can I repeat our usual notes about wearing masks throughout, maintaining social distancing, and if you wish to make an offering, please do so in the collection boxes at the doors on the way out. Our thanks to Marion for playing for us this morning. Next Sunday service will be in Salton at 10 a.m. as usual. We have a coffee morning on Tuesday from 10.30 in Salton behind the Fletcher Hall. Everyone is welcome to come along, but please book in advance and call Janet Banks to do so. Can I also remind you all that there will soon be National Cream Tea Day on the 26th of June and we invite people to participate in that by having a cream tea fundraiser for six friends in your garden providing a cream tea and asking guests to pay £5 each or £10 if you offer a glass of Prosecco Please note that does not cover homemade elderberry wine. <laughs> There's a risk factor involved in that. And, and you're entitled to charge up to £20. So ho hopefully this is going to provide a simple, sociable way to raise funds in these times. If you have any questions, please get in touch with Liz McDougall and the, the money should be delivered to Finlay or myself in the usual way. These are all today's intimations. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. 
Very nice to see you all. The psalmist writes, Give thanks to the Lord for he is good, for his steadfast love and yours forever. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with us all. Let us worship God. Our first hymn this morning is hymn number 519, 519, Love Divine or Last Excelling. In this time, in this 
this place, wherever we are, whoever we are. We come to listen for your voice, speaking through the ages, through the seasons, the scriptures, and through your people. With minds, hearts, eyes and ears open to the wonder of your presence, help us now to look for the coming of your kingdom, and the promise of a new life in your love. As we pray together in the words Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We will now hear our readings, and after that we will have a few moments of music for our own reflections. Today's readings are from 1 Samuel chapter 17 and we're reading verses 32 to 49 and then from verse 57 to verse 5 in chapter 18. David said to Saul, let no one's heart fail because of him. Your servant will go and fight with this Philistine. Saul said to David, you are not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him, for you are just a boy, and he has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from its mouth. And if it turned against me, I would catch it by the jaw, strike it down, and kill it. Your servant has killed both lions and bears, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be like one of them, since he has defied the armies of the living God. David said, The Lord who saved me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear will save me from the hand of this Philistine. So Saul said to David, Go. And may the Lord be with you. Saul clothed David with his armour. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with a coat of mail. David strapped Saul's sword over the armour and he tried in vain to walk, for he was not used to them. Then David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I am not used to them. So David removed them. Then he took his staff in his hand and chose five smooth stones from the wadi and put them in his shepherd's bag in the pouch. His sling was in his hand and he drew near to the Philistine. The Philistine came on and drew near to David with his shield bearer in front of him. When the Philistine looked and saw David, he disdained him for he was only a youth, ruddy and handsome in appearance. The Philistine said to David, Am I a dog that you come to me with sticks? And the Philistine cursed David by his gods. The Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the field. But David said to the Philistine, You come to me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This very day the Lord will deliver you into my hand, and I will strike you down and cut off your head. And I will give the dead bodies of the Philistine army this very day to the birds of the air and to the wild animals of the earth, so that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. 
and that all this assembly may know that the Lord does not save by sword and spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hand. When the Philistine drew nearer to meet David, David ran quickly towards the battle line to meet the Philistine. David put his hand in his bag, took out a stone, slung it, and struck the Philistine on his forehead. The stone sank into his forehead, and he fell face down on the ground. On David's return from killing the Philistine, Abner took him and brought him before Saul, with the head of the Philistine in his hand. Saul said to him, Whose son are you, young man? And David answered, I am the son of your servant Jesse, the Bethlehemite. When David had finished speaking to Saul, the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul took him that day and would not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as his own soul. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that he was wearing and gave it to David, and his armour, and even his sword, and his bow, and his belt. David went out and was successful wherever Saul sent him. As a result, Saul set him over the army, and all the people, even the servants of Saul, approved. May God bless these readings of his holy word, and to his name be glory and praise. Amen. <laughs> Chase, who is a shepherd, 
the police dog, and he makes sure that everybody is doing the right thing. And then we've got Everest, who um, is a husky, um, and she is the Scottish dog, or at least dubbed by the Scottish actor. Um, and she's got a snowmobile and helps people who get into trouble um, in the mountains. So that's only two of them. If you would like to find out any more about them or any of the other dogs, I would just point you to Finn, who can talk about them for hours. <laughs> when I was a child, I liked watching cartoons too, although Paw Patrol wasn't quite on the cards then. One of the ones that I enjoyed was Tom and Jerry, seeing how their little clever mouse would always outwit the vengeful cat despite the rather unfavorable odds. Today's Bible passage reminds me a bit of Tom and Jerry. Just like the cartoon, it is a story of unfavorable, if not to say impossible, odds. One where the seemingly weaker boy has no possible chance against the experienced, much bigger and much better equipped fighter. In the passage, we meet young David, who will become such an important figure for the Israelites, and who is even named as one of the ancestors of Jesus. King David, a hero, a champion for God and God's people, and yet by all accounts, not always dignified, not always well behaved, or fair, or good even. Over the next few weeks, we'll hear a bit more about David's life and significance and about why he was still chosen by God, despite all his many faults and mistakes. Today, though, we see the young boy David. He was the eighth and youngest son of Jesse, the Bethlehemite, and of Elizabeth, making him a great-grandson of Ruth, another significant Old Testament figure. As a young boy, David is a shepherd, and yet he gets marked for higher office. We might remember how we met the prophet Samuel in our reading a couple of weeks ago. Now Samuel had anointed Saul as king of the Israelites and had become his advisor. However, once Saul became a bit too big for his boots, God tells Samuel that it's time to find someone else better suited for kingship. And sent Samuel to Jesse to choose one of his sons to become the next king. Jesse duly parades his sons before Samuel, but his youngest, David, shepherd that he is, is out with the flocks. But Samuel is a man of God for nothing. He declares that the older seven sons of Jesse are all not quite what he's looking for. And isn't that possibly anyone else? So Jesse sends for David. And as he comes in, we read that he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. God confirms to Samuel that David is the one. And Samuel anoints him future king. There's only one problem. Saul is still very much alive and understandably very attached to his throne and his power. Not minding too much that God has withdrawn the divine seal of approval for his kingship. Instead, he concentrates on his ongoing battles with the Philistines. After losing many soldiers on both sides, the Philistines eventually send out a champion. A mountain of a man, a fighter, equipped with all the best weaponry and gear they could muster. The legendary Goliath, of course. The story tells us that when Saul and his army heard his challenge, they were dismayed and greatly afraid. And then, this slip of a boy, young David, steps forward and offers to deal with Goliath on behalf of the Israelites. So, loves him off. After all, David is only a shepherd boy, not a soldier, who only happened to be there at this point because his father had asked him to take provisions to his brothers 
who were soldiers in Saul's army. But David isn't scared or discouraged. Instead, he tells Saul how he is used to defending his flocks against lions and bears. We can probably imagine what both Saul and Goliath thought of David when they saw him stepping out without armor, without any weapons besides a few stones from the riverbed, looking positively tiny besides huge Goliath. But David has something more powerful than weapons, something more protective than armor. He knows that God is with him. He knows that God is on his side. And so he puts his confidence and trust in that knowledge, takes out his stone and slingshot, and Goliath goes down. After the battle, David is rightly celebrated. And in Saul's house, he meets his son Jonathan, and the two become fast friends. We read that the soul of Jonathan was bound to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Saul even takes David into his house and sends him on missions as his ambassador. Unsurprisingly, David is very popular among his people, and Saul, also unsurprisingly, becomes jealous. So jealous that he tries to kill off the young man. But having God's protection, David evades him and enjoys his popularity. Saul doesn't behave very nicely. He offers David his eldest daughter Mera, his wife, only to give her to someone else at the last minute. Then, when David and Saul's younger daughter Michal fall in love, Saul promises them that they can marry if David succeeds in battle against the Philistines once more. Of course, hoping that David won't survive that battle. Saul clearly underestimated what God's protection would do for David, as David survived scheme after scheme that Saul thought out against him. The story of David and Goliath is such a well-known tale. It's one of encouragement in times when we find ourselves facing unfavorable odds, when, we might help, when it might help us to remember that God knows us and loves us. Yes, each one of us, even a young, unremarkable shepherd boy from Bethlehem. <coughs> it's an illustration that sometimes, no matter how hopeless a situation might look, things might yet go our way we might yet find that it's not so hopeless after all. If we trust in what we know, if we are true to ourselves, and if we trust in God. The second part of the story is also quite remarkable. The deep connection between David and Jonathan goes beyond personal ambition, beyond politics or family expectations. Jonathan might well have expected to succeed his father Saul to the throne, to become king himself. And so we might have expected to see him keeping a distance to David, outmaneuvering him and going along with Saul's schemes so that David would definitely not stand in his way to power. Instead, we find that Jonathan is loyal to David, helps and protects him, and eventually pledges allegiance and loyalty to David as future king. I wish us all that we have friends who stand by our side, loyal and fierce, loving and selfless, and that we can be such friends to others. I wish us all that we can put our own insecurities and fears aside when it counts, that we can trust in our skills and abilities, that we can be true to ourselves, no matter how small and insignificant we might think we are, and that we can trust in God to be with us every single day, on every step that we take. Amen.
We join together in song once more, singing hymn number 530, 530. One more step along the bow, I go. Online and in person, 
as we face uncertainty and changes, as we seek to do your work and love your people. We pray that new perspectives can be heard, that we will be able to grow and learn and continue to love. On this Refugee Sunday, we pray with all people who have been displaced and are far away from their loved ones. May they know your healing and peace. As we look to you, we ask for your blessing on each of us gathered today, united in our worship. As we look for the wisdom and courage to listen to you, to walk with you, to live in your love. We pray for healing and new hope for all who are in pain or downhearted today, for places and situations of unrest and injustice, and pray that we may do what we can to participate in bringing about healing and peace, and that in all that we do, we may never walk alone. Go with us, God, and surround us with your presence and with your love today and every day. Amen. We close our time of worship today by singing hymn number 167. 167. Guide me, O thou pray, Jehovah. Thank you.